If you take an animal, whether it's a cat, a dog, bird, whatever it is, make sure you keep that animal for its whole lifetime. My name is Cindy Roth, and I'm the co-founder at All About Cats Rescue in Freeport. All About Cats, we really founded it to help as many animals in need that come across our paths. And it could be anything from a senior citizen that can't afford the insulin for their elderly cat to someone bringing in a baby kitten that they just found off the street. So really our sole mission is just to help as many cats and kittens as we can. We're actually all really here for the animals. We started All About Cats 14 years ago because we had been volunteering somewhere else for five years and we just saw that most of the money that people left in donations never actually went to the animals and it got to the point where it upset us enough and couldn't look away anymore that we decided to buy a building for the animals and do it ourselves. 100% of all our money actually goes to the animals. Most people we find in rescue, it's terrible to say, but they either, it's their life and what gives them a purpose, you know, and it gives them almost like a power trip, or we found that a lot of them actually live off these animals and are crooks. Our facility, we're neither. I don't need the money and I don't need the power trip. I have enough of that from having successful businesses. That's really what makes these animals lucky is that they come here and they don't even realize they're in a shelter. You know, they get sliced turkey every day, they get treats. We take a lot from porterhouses when they call. We have a group that came out of a porterhouse. There was eight of them to an old man, and they had been living in filth and debris, I mean, up to the ceiling. And every single one of them have gotten into their forever home. And because we knew where they came from, we made sure specifically for them that they're all living in the lap of luxury now with, you know, people that are spoiling them rotten. Things like that make us happy. We've had some that actually got adopted, the older ones, and they've come back. The one, Tommy, he's been here for 10 years. Who's that best boy, Tom? He's actually got adopted twice, and twice he was just miserable. So we decided he's just going to stay here forever. That's what really makes us different, is that we will always do what's best for the animal, period. We get cats from all over. People call us from all the five boroughs in New York. We take them in and the first thing we do is evaluate and give them a health check. If they're a kitten, we deworm them, we give them vaccines. If they're an older cat, they'll go for a wellness check at the vet. And then we do paperwork on them and they become part of our family until they find their forever home. The biggest challenge that we face is people think that your facility has endless space, especially during the height of kitten season. I'll get upwards of 100 phone calls a day. At some point, you just can't take any more in. Not that you don't want to, but you just really don't have the space to. So that's always one of the biggest challenges. And along with having the responsibility of all those animals becomes the monetary end. We go through over $1,000 worth of food a week in the summertime, feeding all the animals that are in here. So that's always the second biggest challenge. But there thankfully are enough nice people in this world that love animals that are very generous toward our rescue. The volunteers are the greatest people that love animals, that they come in and they get on their hands and knees and they do litter pans, they wash dishes, they feed them. I mean, there's more grunt work than there actually is pleasure in getting time, you know, to play with them and love them up. And they're just amazing people that, and we've all become a family. We go out socially, something happens bad to one, we all get upset, so it's almost become like a family. You really can't survive without a core group of nice people. You, you can't. We're grateful for all of them. Well, we have one cat in particular that always will come to mind, and his name was Passenger. We didn't even have him in the facility for 24 hours when we realized something was wrong with him. He couldn't eat. So after taking him to the vet, that's when they realized he had a hole 
the size of a half a dollar on the roof of his mouth. He must have gotten into something electrical or something, but everybody told us we should euthanize him. We ended up taking him to Cornell, the specialty hospital, and they ended up actually taking off the top part of his ear to cover the roof of his mouth. And to this day, if you go on our Facebook page, you'll see pictures of him. And this goes back 10 years ago. He's living his best life ever with the greatest family. He looks a little funny. He's got a flappy ear and his tongue sticks out of his mouth, but he's a happy guy. Things like that are just rewarding for us. He's one of the best stories that have come out of here. I love all animals. Cats are just very misunderstood. So it's probably why most of us here actually love them. I don't want to say more because that's not really the right word, but you know, want to help them as much as we can. Uh, long-term goals are always to just get bigger and better. And that's the long-term goal. It's just to rescue more than the year before and do more spay and neuters than the year before and always just get better than the year before. We also have our own low-cost clinic on the property where we do 3,000 spay and neuters a year. We were actually on there last night until 1.30 in the morning, but yeah, we do a lot of low-cost spay and neuters for people that can't afford it. It's a way that the animals are actually getting the help they need because otherwise they wouldn't. Our spay is $190 as compared to most vets that get anywhere from eight to 1200 today so it's a big difference. Cats are very independent but I know I go home at night and my cats are right at the door waiting for me. They're in the bed with me. They're just as loving. They're just really misunderstood. So that's why I think all of us here have more of an affinity for a cat just because people will always give up their cat before their dog. So I guess it's like we root for the underdog even if you want to put it that way. What I would like to tell people is they have more feelings than they realize because the one heartbreak that we see here almost really on a daily basis is when someone passes away or even after years of having the animal, they just, they give it up and they don't see what it does to the animal, how they shut down. Over the years, we've had a few that actually passed away because they shut down so bad we couldn't get them to eat and the vet couldn't get them to eat. They ended up dying because of it, you know, and if you're gonna take in an animal, make it no different than your family. That's really what I would want people to know.